blessed good night and a welcome to the Grace Reign Radio Broadcast. And it is being brought to you with the kind compliments of Spirit and Truth Ministries. And it is heard here every Saturday night on Life 97.5 FM. And in the studio tonight, we have our Pastor Lynette Taylor. A blessed good night of Grace Reign evening to you. And also on my left, both of them are on my left tonight, <laughs> we have our senior pastor, Pastor Ramon Taylor. A very blessing good evening to all of our listeners, and God bless you as you tune in this evening to our program. We just pray that what you hear this evening will in truth and indeed bless your hearts. Amen. And I am Minister Lemuel Taylor. You won't be hearing another familiar voice tonight, our brother Kerry Hoyt. He is... Um, he's on a mission. He's on a mission. <laughs> a very, very special mission this evening. Good night to you, Brother Kerry. I'm sure you are listening to the program and we'll be happy to have you back with us next week. Oh, and yes. God's blessings and protection over you and your wife tonight. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, over the last several weeks, we have been looking at the works of grace. And we have been seeing with increasing clarity that not only do these works originate with God, but they are directed and sustained by him. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So they don't just begin with God and then he hands them over to us for us to do whatever we like with them. He is the one who directs them and he's the one who provides the power to sustain the yes. works Amen. of grace in our lives. Amen. Amen. So oftentimes in life when we are feeling that sense of frustration in completing tasks that we have a, a charted path for in our mind, what is happening is that that path is usually not the ideal path and it usually is going against the perfect will of God for us. That is where you usually find that tension. That is where you usually find that frustration stepping in. Mm -hmm. It's when you're doing something that is going against the will of God for your life. Yes. Because you look at the life of, of, of the Apostle Paul, for instance, uh -huh. even though he met challenges, because this is the thing that people have to understand, challenges on the path do not mean that you're on the wrong path that's it but what's happening internally can have can give you a very good idea of whether or not you are where you're supposed to be yes. the apostle paul for instance when he was met you know faced with shipwreck and faced with he was bitten by a snake a venomous snake when he was thrown in jail when he was beaten when all of these things were happening to paul Paul was in no way discouraged. As a matter of fact, these things were encouraging Paul because he knew that he was on the path that God had set out yes. for him. Right. When Jesus was here, Jesus was on the path that God set out for him, as we were looking at last mm -hmm. week, when he said, I don't do anything unless I've seen my father do it. I don't say anything unless I've heard my father say it. Mm -hmm. And even though people were after Jesus' life, they were trying to trip him up at every turn. They were trying to make him look stupid. They were trying to slow him down as much as they could Jesus was not perturbed by that because That's he knew it. he was on the right path a lot of the times when frustration comes in on our walk it is because we have decided to take a detour and go on our own path so what we want to know tonight is that God has special plans and purposes for our lives and one of our greatest quests is to find out what they are through the guidance of the Word of God and through the Holy Spirit Amen. Hallelujah. The best we can begin. Even be, let me jump back here with something you just mentioned with the Apostle Paul. It's kind of interesting when you study the life of Paul. That when the Apostle Paul was on his for, former quest before he got into the preaching of the gospel, Paul was doing things and he thought that what he was doing was okay. Yeah. He thought it was all right. Mm -hmm. And Paul was very zealous about the things that he was going after. But we find that when Paul came to a new understanding, when Paul came to the way of grace, the way of life that God had really purpose for him, because the word of God tells us that God had purposed this for Paul. Yes. When he, before, when he was in his mother's womb, God had specially prepared him for this, but he was not yeah. walking in it. Mm -hmm. And even though he was doing a job, a particular job, or carrying a particular purpose, and he thought that that was it, it was only after he found the purpose that God had for him that he was able to declare and and really see how satisfactory for him that it really was. Yes. In fact, all the other things that Paul had gotten into, Paul was able to see of them, I count them as dumb, yes. as yes. manure, yes. as mm -hmm. nothing at all, yeah. so that he could get into the purposes of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Even with Jesus in the vessel with the storm, what did he say? With the storm, he didn't say, oh, shoot, let's turn back. Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. said, we are going we to. We are going to. Yes, already declared that. So you left with purpose. You yes. knew where you was going. You declared, this is where we are going. Yes. So whether or not there's a storm, 
you can go forward Amen. in the storm Amen. because Jesus is in Jesus the boat. Jesus is in the boat. You left with the Holy Spirit's guidance, right. and you know that. You know what? Storm or no storm, we're going over so it's a, to it's the a, other it's side. A destiny is a purpose that God asked me, Amen. and He knew how to walk in it. He could Amen. Be Amen. So the first question we want to look at this evening is Proverbs chapter nineteen and verse twenty-one. We want to read it first from the New Living Translation. And it says, "You can make many plans, mm -hmm. but the Lord's purpose will prevail." Glory Glory to God. We can make many plans. Wow. We can make a lot of plans, and don't we make a lot of plans? We do make a lot of plans in this life, but it tells us here, but the Lord's purpose is the one that will prevail. Amen. I'm going to read this from several other um, um, verses of Scripture from other translations as well. Well, the same Scripture, but from other translations, so you get an idea of what is being taught about here in the Proverbs. This is the next one. This is from the Message Bible. Same verse, but from the Message Bible. Mm -hmm. And it says, we humans keep brainstorming options and plans, but God's purpose prevails. Right. Uh -uh. That, that we oh, humans yes. keep brainstorming, brainstorming options. options and plans. We hold, we hold, we hold, we call, call in the board. Yeah. We call in the, the, the different people from the office and we have all these planning meetings and yes. all these yes. things to sort out how the business will go, how things will function. But it says that no matter how many brainstorming sessions that you have, and how many plans that you make, God's purpose will prevail. It is God's purpose Amen. that will stand. And notice again, you know, from the King James Version. This is what the King James Version says. There are many devices in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord, that shall stand. So you see that? There are many devices in a man's heart. <laughs> many. Not one or two. And we always are coming up with things. And I look at the word devices and, and look and see what that word means. It means plans. Yes. Schemes. Yes. Strategies. Yes. We always strategizing. We always put it, put it, put a lot of things together. Look at this one. Tactics. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> a lot of tactics that we come up with. Desires. And not just desires, but it's strong, strong desires. desires. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and this is here, the King James Version translates that as many voices. We have a lot of things going on in our heads. Yes. We have a lot of things just going on. Yes. And <laughs> I, I find it really that it stems from, and this is why grace is so important in this season. Why we've been on grace now, this is the last, um, what, close to three years now that we've been doing yes. this program. And we've been on grace a lot longer than that in our ministry. And why we stay with grace? Because grace the gospel, is the great stabilizing factor. Mm -hmm. You know, that this is the gospel. This, this is, is the really gospel. the gospel. This is the good news. That's it. And what grace does is that grace brings a sense of peace and a sense of calm that you don't get from religion. Re right. Religion does not give you peace. Religion does not give you stability. It does not give you calm. Only Jesus can do that. We go back to the boat again. What was Jesus doing when the storm arose? Sleep. He was asleep. He was, he was relaxed. He was yes. at rest. And unfortunately, what happens with us, we human beings, as soon as we, we see rest, we get nervous. Mm -hmm. Anytime you see rest, we get nervous. And what did the disciples tell Jesus even at that point in time? Careless though not that we perish? Yes. They, would want, they would have wanted at that point in time that Jesus would have been up running around on the deck of the boat, getting, you know, everybody with buckets trying to bail water off the side of the boat. And it, and they, would have, they would have been <laughs> more relaxed if Jesus had been up with them doing that. Yes. But Jesus is at rest and they're upset with the rest that Jesus has and gone to him Care is not master, That's care right. is not not that we perish. And that happens a lot in religion. Yeah. You know, some people are flustered because you look calm. Right. That's right. that's that's the point. That you are calm, things are happening. You can't see the church looking like uh, they want you to go and start just get every just get busy and get anxious and reach out your hand and stand in the arms for nothing. Hmm. And that's the challenge with religion. And you always have to be revising. You work this one, it works, so you're gonna go on somewhere else. You can do this today and then tomorrow. If I, you can't be doing it. Which one is it? Which one? We need stability in that's the world that is shaking. That's it. And shaking. You need stability. That's it. And that's why God would, would, would cause the church to come back to this place where it started in Acts 2 with grace. Amen. Amen. Because there was great stability then and it has to come back before he comes. That's it. That's it. Because if not, he will come and we won't even recognize him. He's too busy shaking. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I thought it was going to be there just even as you were talking about um, the fishermen, the, of the men of God in the boat. 
And it, it made the back to what we just read in the message by book. Because here they were in the midst of a storm. But what were they doing? <laughs> brainstorming. Brainstorming. Listen, look at because that. Look at those verses. We almost keep brainstorming. And they're going to be trying to come with all kinds oh, of ideas like, of how we can get to steady this boat. Yeah. How can we steady the boat? How yeah. can we steady this boat that we are in? Yes. It, was, it was other, you know, Peter had one idea. John had another idea. The next Mark, Mark whoever, well, whoever's in the boat at the time, everybody has a different idea of what to do. But the only body of the real solution is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Peter being a fisherman. He probably was the one everybody's looking to. <laughs> and and he, he was and just as scared. Right. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yes. And, and, and clearly, he didn't have the solution because it. if not, they wouldn't have bothered Jesus. They wouldn't have to bother that's Jesus because right. Peter would have said, "Hey, all right, well, all right, boys, when the wind start to blow, we gonna lean the oar this way, we gonna sail that way, way. <laughs> that way, and we can tighten the mast and all that sort of thing." Throw true buckets, and right? Then, when it gets in, then we throw we throw true buckets, and buckets and that sort of thing. But <laughs> and clearly, none of the natural means of solving the problem were working. Right. Clearly, none of the natural means of solving the problem were working. And I, and I think God allows sometimes, allows us to go through certain processes till we get to the place where we run out of ourselves. Mm -hmm. yes. Where we run out of ourselves. Where we, we get to realize, you know what? I have no hope now. Yes. I need Jesus in this situation. I need God in this situation. And then God steps in and comes and shows us just how easy it really was. Well, the option from the very beginning was, was the very start. Was me. It was me. Yeah. But we go, we do all kinds of other things. And then we say, oh, we run out of options. So now we go back. But the to only God. option is the only option. But that's <laughs> it. That's Jesus. Yeah, and, that, and then it turns in here what the verses are saying all along. But the Lord's purpose will we'll prevail. That's, that's it. it. But the Lord's purpose will prevail. Mm -hmm. But the Lord's purpose it shall stand. Yes. And Amen. Amen. get back one, to that all the one time. Option all the all time. The time. That's what we gotta recognize. Right. Amen. Look at the Amplified version now of this same verse. Mm -hmm. The Amplified says, "Many plans are in a man's mind. Many plans. Many. But it is the Lord's purpose for him that will stand, or that will be carried out." Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Thank God this evening. Glory to God. Thank God, Thank God for Glory you. To it's God. only the wisdom and the plans of God that are going to work in our lives. So if we want to unlock the purpose which is uniquely designed as ours in Christ, we must look to the Word of God and to the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And this will reveal the plan of God for us. And we will be able to chart the best course for the special design that God has built into us. Because remember, uh, this comes out of the fact that, that God is the master craftsman. Yes. Oh, we yes. are his workmanship. Yes. yes. So we have to lean on him. We have to trust him. We have to allow him to work all oh, his perfect plan for which he That's designed it. and for which he purposed us. Amen. Amen. We Amen. created in Christ Jesus. Yes. Created unto good works. And the only way we're going to know what those works are is if we stay with Christ. Amen. If you're in Christ, you can't expect to find the good works outside of him. Right. Yeah, you can't right. expect to jump out to Christ and go, hey, let me find some works. Let me see if I can find some work down the street, down the road, somewhere, I have to find them in Christ. That's so right. I have to be looking to him to take me through what so the God has designed you to, to be, be a, a beautiful black pot. You're serving no purpose if you're just in the car and being a garbage can. That's right. You that's can't. Right. But that's not, what the, that's not the purpose for which you were created. That's it. So he's created us as beautiful vessels of honor for his glory and for his honor. So we must find out from him then through his Holy Spirit, what is it that he has designed us for? Amen. What is our real purpose? And then Amen. we must flow into the purpose for which God has called us. Amen. And, and even with that in mind, we want to shift gears a little bit tonight. And, and we're going to look at some to uh, the topic that is really necessary for us to understand. And it kind of ties in with works because you can't really get to the grace works unless you first understand, well, what is grace? Why do yeah. I need grace? Why, do I, why am I even saved? Right. And that's what we really want to begin to look at in the next few weeks is as what, what is really salvation? What does it mean to be saved? It helps you understand who you are. Who you are. And yes. what you are all about. Yes, yes. You are our spiritual yes. identity. Yes. What, 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 what is this thing about salvation? Who, mm. what, who are we? What is it to be saved? You know, what are these concepts that we talk about? What does it mean to be saved? What are we being saved from? Why do we need to be saved? You know? Who's doing the saving? And what happens after we have been saved, after we come to salvation? Yeah. A lot of these are questions that Christians silently ask, but they don't, you know, they don't they don't necessarily put it out in public that these are things that they're, they're wondering about. But a lot of believers walk around not really understanding the they're true concept. Sure that of, they're confused. That's it. 
they don't understand the true concept of what salvation really is. And we mm -hmm. go to evangelistic meetings and so on, and we preach salvation to the world. And a lot of times when people don't respond is because we give it to them in such a muddled way anyway, that yeah. they don't even want to come to salvation because we don't seem to be sure of what it is that we have. Yes, that's, that's it. it. We don't seem sure of what we have. So we need to be sure of these things tonight. And all of these questions are not only valid, but they're essential to understanding our new life in Christ. And in fact, it will help to even further understand what our real roles and purposes are in this life. And when you Amen. come to Christ, there's a purpose laid out for you. There is a role laid out for you to play. But you cannot understand what that role is unless you understand first who you have been created and, to and be. the only way that we're going to really get into this is to debunk some theories that have been put up there. That's it. Because that's one of the things that Grace is also doing for us, is debunking a lot of the theories that have been put up there. A lot of the things that we have believed and have thought for centuries, Yes. you know, that have been promoted up there. Yes. And yet, when you come again to the Word of God, you find that a lot of those things that have been promoted are not really so. Mm -hmm. So what, what Grace is really doing for us is that Grace is taking the blinkers off of our eyes, the yes. veil off of our eyes, yes. and it's allowing us to see things now for the Amen. first time, Amen. 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 the way that God intended. So one of the first things that we want to look at this evening is this idea that, this idea that only a few people, mm -hmm. only a few people are going to be saved out of the way. Mm -hmm. A lot of people believe that. And I, and I tell that some churches that I begin to teach this in a way as though there are going to be a lot more persons in hell than there are going to be persons in heaven or people who are saved. Let's put it that way. Right. Mm -hmm. I want to show you right from the word of God that that is not the case at all. That's it. That's not the case. That's so it. let's start by looking at Revelation chapter 10 verses 9 and 10. Mm -hmm. And it says this. After this, I looked. And there before me was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, tribe, people, and language standing before the throne and before the Lamb. They were wearing white robes and were holding palm branches in their hands. And they cried out in a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And right away, we can jump oh, into this verse. Jesus. Jesus. I think the first thing that jumps over here at us, before me there was a, a great, great multitude. multitude. Oh, yes. And not only a great multitude, that, that no, no one, one could count. count. Hallelujah. Count them, then that means that something is totally wrong with this. Jesus. Jesus. It's a Jesus. great that, multitude. That theory of 144,000. Just to see it up one day. You can hold them at wow. the stadium. That's right. So I don't know really. But that, really. <laughs> and it says, from every nation. Yes. Tribe. People. And language. And I often think so maybe you look at the scripture. Why would the Holy Spirit go to such length? To put all these little bits and pieces of information here for us. Mm -hmm. He could have simply given us and said, a great multitude that no one can come from every nation or from many nations. Right. And that, he could have said that. That would have been enough. And that would have been enough. But he, and the Holy Spirit emphasizes these things for a purpose and for a reason. Mm -hmm. From every nation, tribe, people, and language. Yes. This is why grace is with for controversy. Right. And when the rose colored glasses come off and the veil is off your eyes, then you really see what the Holy Spirit it's is saying. saying. Amen. You got to open so your eyes. So nobody now could come and tell you that is only a hundred and forty four thousand. And recently we hear somebody say really somebody's understanding the case. <laughs> Let's know. I mean really <laughs> Which Bible are there. you reading? <laughs> Which spirit are you Bible. listening to? It cannot be the Holy Spirit. That's it. Because there are many spirits and you got to trade them. Because any spirit that's telling you just a few going into heaven, that spirit is from hell. That's right, because it's not it's plain not, and straight. It's not the heart of the Father to, 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 not to, the to give us so many hoops to jump through no way. to get and, into and, heaven. And to, for Jesus Christ to, to come. Today for the world, for God so loved the, the world, world. Not billions, for billions, thousand, billions of people, the world, that billions he gave of people, his only begotten son, just to collect a few, a bucket, a drop in not the even a te not even a tithe, man. <laughs> they didn't mean to say he could still be angels and let everybody belong. Because if you only want to report for it, what you want them for? That is exactly. You got billions of angels, keep them. That's right. And, and forget all the rest, just yeah. keep them. Yeah, it's true. It is so, so, so true. So, by the time you find them in heaven, you, you, I mean, they're they all over the place. 
what value what, what? <laughs> they are to you. Then he said, then he does that. Hard enough for him, for us to drop yeah. any bucket. So what would the point of sending Jesus to give it in the first place? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you have to see what, right now we just say that we have over 7 billion persons on the face of the earth. Yes. Right now. Right now. Yeah. Right, right now. So, so right what's now. the point only just hand picking or pulling up only 144,000? Or less, because the say no is less yeah. than that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> that is as crazy as you yeah. can get. It's true. Yeah. It's so, true. so look at here back at the things that are born here. He said that he's a great multitude that is standing before the throne that no man can number. That's right. And it says of nations. Mm -hmm. And we talk about nations, you talk about communities. Right. Yes. Places of origin. Mm -hmm. Geographic localities. Mm -hmm. So these, these are people from all all the places, known and unknown. That's right. <laughs> That's it. Says, it. It tells some places that yet to be discovered. So That's but it. But people coming from all of these. I mean, we said they was reading this and very interested. They found another tribe in one of the in the in the Amazon forest of where that you know that people didn't even know they existed. Mm -hmm. I was kind of surprised reading this only a few days ago. Mm -hmm. But these people are there. That's right. God made them for a purpose. That's right. So if God is just going to come down and sweep the whole world and forget about them and just blow them off the face of the earth, all just going to go to hell. Yeah. Never yet having right. known anything about Jesus or why they exist, what is their purpose. Hmm. So it has to be a lot more than that. So he yes. says you have nations and then of tribes. Tribes is talking about social groups that e existing before the development of humans, of, of nation states. So what about happen what happened to the Caribs? Right. And the Awaks mm -hmm. and all these people. That's it. All right. You can't resist the Arabs and Jesus can't find them. <laughs> <laughs> and and when we talk about tribe, it has to do with genealogy. I was thinking this evening it was amazing. It was going to point this evening that it's kind of interesting that at this particular juncture in our history, that all of a sudden that there's this this interest in in tracing your genealogy. Right. And they begin a lot of people who thought that they were of a certain um, um background yeah, or whatever. Background, yeah. And not discovering that they have a they lot have more all over. It's that's right. Different persons and, right. and different um, groups. Yeah, but even yes. even us, I think uh, one of the one of the um one of the gene gene traces that we've done recently, uh, a member of our family had done a, a gene trace and found that we have some Viking blood in our yes. in our in our gene in our in our gene pool. I mean, I yeah, it's not from us. Ireland. Mm -hmm. So 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 looking at us, <laughs> yeah, we would never believe what, 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 that we have we Scottish have in, in, in your blood. In right. that, that <laughs> you is understand? Far, that is as far out as we go. Yeah, you know, you mean, you, you, tell me some place in Africa. You yeah, you believe it. I, I would, I would say that. Yeah, but, but places, but right? Vikings, right. right. And so that, that uh, is the thing. One of the things you'll get to realize with this is that God alone, and I think that's the reason why he told man when they left the garden to spread out. Spread out. Because God wanted himself, the, the, the image of himself that he placed in man to have as many expressions as it possibly could. Mm -hmm. And you get those expressions as man spreads out and families mm -hmm. mix with families. Yes. You know, you go overseas and you study and you bring back home some person and, and you get married and have children or something like that there. Or, you know, these things happen. I mean, you marry different different families, marrying into different families. You get this blend going on that God is saying, I am getting to make as many expressions of myself in the earth. Amen. So that's what God is really after. So that's what it really says here, that this is then genealogy in terms of tribes. This is, uh, you know, groups of people with common ancestry, mm -hmm. common genealogy. Yeah. And that genealogy can stretch as far that's as far here, as, as around the other side of that's the world. It. That's it. And that's the thing. So all people be a representative. But, but then you see the word people. people. <laughs> and people now, collective human beings made up of women, men and children in known, mm -hmm. um, uh, known groups, races, languages, etc. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. Yeah. I was funny that we were, we were in Ghana several years ago that we, we met these, uh, we call them these um, Amerindian yeah. type people. Mm -hmm. We wanted to discover that a lot of those people that are in a particular area, that they, a lot of these came from like, places like Brazil. Right. Like, Different groups, but when you look at them, they all look alike. Yeah. But yeah, when you start to look at the whole background, where they all trace that uh, came from across um, South America, and South, South America. America, different groups, but they all came together in that, in that little area there where right. we were at, and they were living there. So this is what God is talking about: collective human beings made up of women, men, children, and known or unknown groups, races. And languages, and then in the same passage, he puts in languages. Yes, yes. you see, so these are things that we have to look at. And languages have to do with linguistics. Mm -hmm. Wikipedia tells us that, as right now at this current juncture, there are over between 5,000 to 7,000 known languages, right? 
And you're discovering more. And there yes. are some are no laws in uh, Yeah, they're discovering Asia. more. Some, some countries still have to get to understand. Uh, and, and what all this is saying here, and the point that we're building really out of this, because we're really going to have to come back to this more yes. in depth next week. We just kind of, you know, just scratching, just, just opening up the door with this one, right? But what we're doing here is to let you know that God's intention for mankind is that all humans will be saved. Mm -hmm. We know that that's not going to be the case that every single person is not but going to make it in. But God's intention and is that intent. every human being Eventually, will be saying that's what you want. That any, yeah, that should, any perish. should perish. So, if you're perishing, it's because that is your choice. He also made us with choice. Right. But it is not his intention. But the way that sometimes the gospel, well, not the gospel, how people preach. Messages that go. The messages that go <laughs> is as though God is after some people to just cut them down and get rid of them. It's their choice if they want to go with him or if they want to go somewhere else. That's it. That's how he has made us because of who man is. Man was made with choice because he did not want robots. He could have mm -hmm. had robots, Amen. but he did not want robots. Amen. He's not a robot, so he could not make robots because we were made in his image. Amen. That's right. Like and he has a choice. Mm -hmm. He could have chosen to get rid of man. He chose not to. That's it. That's and it. That's what we have to recognize. Amen. And then there are people who are also putting up this whole thing of that God is only saving a specific few and that once he finished calling those he's done with that's the rest it. and that is not true at all misunderstanding we're going to, we to look at these things mm -hmm. as we go on over the next couple of weeks amen amen and so since the renewed preaching then of the grace of god that has been revived in this last day there are many voices that have arisen in opposition to this message that we are bringing and i know that you know there's some places you go you preach this thing and there are people that get nervous you know they get yeah. they, they, they shift in the seats and stuff like that there but what 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 people have said is that we are making this path of salvation sound too easy we, we as human beings, we like challenge. We like, we like to, to know yes. that, you know, there are hoops to jump through <laughs> to get to something. And that because you got, got some fire around Yeah, around. Some, fire, yeah. Some, some fire around those hoops. And the thing about it is, is a lack of understanding of how good salvation is. Salvation is so valuable that yes. Jesus, that, that they, they, you, you couldn't put a price tag on it. To put a price tag on salvation would be to lower its value. From the so infinite the value, value that it has, it has itself. to be free to mankind. Mm -hmm. But remember that it was paid for, mm -hmm. because what we, we what we don't understand is the, because it costs us nothing. Somehow we get this impression that if we say to man that it costs nothing to us to receive salvation, that it will be trampled underfoot. Right. But if you understand that it cost Jesus everything he had, it cost God that eternal connection that he had with Christ. Even if it was only for three hours, they had never been separated before. For him to be separated on that cross, for him to have to look up and say, my God, the first time that he would have ever had to say that, he was always saying, my father, my father, my father. For Jesus to have to say, my God, meant he had been separated at that, mo at that moment in time he said, because my he God. was carrying the sin that we, that we really were, we were born in. That's the sin it. came on him. And he said, my God, so that tonight you can say, my Father. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So, you know, we're going to come back into this <laughs> next week. Uh, this is always exciting. Yeah, and we're going to really yeah. look into really what salvation is, why we need it, how we can get it, and how it works in our lives. Amen. And we Amen. are Spirit and Truth Ministries. And we meet at the Luther Thorn Memorial Primary School. Sundays at 10 a.m. And Thursdays at 7 p.m. we meet for Bible study. Our telephone numbers are 426-9768, 426-9488, and 4170035. And until next week, when we come back with the grace of God, we declare over you, Shalom. Shalom. Are you guys nice? are you guys nice? are you guys <laughs> Yeah, it creeps up fast. Yeah, yeah, because you have about five minutes a day. It's not a day. It's not a day. It's not a day. It's not a Yes, it is now 8 o'clock in Prime Minister in Eastern Caribbean, and you're listening to like 97.5 FM. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Oh, yes. Oh, my soul. Oh, my soul.
Ready for the one? Are we ready? Yes, yes. Set up, I tell you, that Nico, set up, I tell you, 